Uh, welcome back to uh, this Principles of Finance series. So this time uh, we're going to have a look at uneven cash flows. Um, so far we've seen lump sum payments, um, we've also seen annuities. Um, you know, when annuities were obviously cash flows uh, where there was a constant payment. <coughs> so Although many financial decisions do actually involve constant payments like annuities, uh, many others involve non-constant payments. Dividends on common stock, for example, uh, typically increase over time. Uh, investments in capital equipment almost always generate uneven cash flows. Um, and so the idea over here is to introduce the concept that <clears throat> we could have one of those timelines where all the cash flows that are you know kind of coming in and out are a little bit different each year um, so I just want to flip back um, to, to introduce this idea I want to flip back to our formula one um, if you remember um, from the first video the future value of any lump sum is the present value of that lump sum times one plus I to the n so again you know we have that present value and we multiply it by the compound factor as we said now a second formula we introduced was that the present value actually equals the future value divided by 1 plus i to the n, or the future value multiplied by 1 over 1 plus i to the, the n. <coughs> and we said, you know, that this whole kerfuffle over here was the discount factor because it's taking something in the future and it's bringing it back to the present. Obviously it's intuitive because when you multiply something you know you make it bigger, when you divide something you make it smaller, so it's very intuitive. Um, let's draw a timeline over here um, just to understand again uh, what we meant by that. Let's just do one, two and three this time. Um, we're always standing in today, right? Um, and we're kind of looking out ahead into the future. That's, you know, that would be in terms of problem one. We're standing over here with a present value. We're about to invest it at some, you know, interest rate for a certain amount of time, let's say three years. And we want to know how much are we going to have um, over here, right? Now, if we reverse this concept, we can also say that let's say we you know, have a certain amount of money after three years, how much would it be at the beginning? I.e. if we have a future value, what would the present value be? So this kind of introduces the concept of uneven cash flows and also eventually net present values, um, which we'll get to. Uh, but the concept over here um, is that all of these payments, right? Payment one, payment two, payment three, um, and let's just, you know, actually, let's let's change up those variables there because I don't want you to necessarily think that these are all the same. Um, in fact, for this exercise, we should really think that they are not. Um, so let's just have x, y, and z here, um, just to demonstrate the idea of uneven cash flows. If we're standing here today, there we go. It's my first attempt at drawing a stick, man, um, and that's his nose. So he's kind of, you know. He's looking, he's looking down there. He's looking that way. He's standing uh, today. Let's give him some ears or whatever. Okay, that's cool. And some hair. Yeah. Now we're standing here today, and we're looking out into the future. Um, the idea is that all of these values that happen after a year, after two years, after three years, they're all future values. These are all considered future values. Um, the only time we have a present value is today, is in the present. Um, but when we're looking out, all of these are considered future values. Now, how do we get these back to the present? Well, let's just, let's just, you know, change colour. Let's just kind of put this into parentheses for a second, x and y, and just have a look at z. So, z is a future value, how do we get it back to the present? Well, obviously, we take z as the future value, and we divide it by 1 plus i, whatever i is, and then do it to the power of 3, because we'd pull it back 1, 2, 3 to the present, to know what the present value is. That's the idea, we're just <coughs> kind of taking that value z, and we are just kind of knocking it all the way back to b in, you know, time period 0. That's the idea. Now. Let's open up these again. 
imagine if we had x and y and z. <clears throat> well, that would really introduce the idea of uneven cash flows, because all we're doing here is instead of just taking one future value after three years, we're going to take all three of these future values in each of their respective years. So the idea over here is that there's going to be the present value of this entire cash flow x, y, and z is going to look like this. Let's do it in a different colour. Present value equals, well, let's, let's have a look at our first future value. Standing here looking out into the future, whoa, there's our first future value after one year, and it's x. So we're going to have to take x as that you know future value, and we're going to have to divide it by its... <coughs> Um, you know, 1 plus i to the n, or we would say multiply it by its discount factor, but, you know, we're multiplying by 1 over something, so we're, we're dividing it. So, you know, it's going to be x over 1 plus, well, the interest rate is constant, that much we know. Um, uneven interest rates, you know, when we get to spot rates and forward rates, which actually we don't get to in, in principles of finance, that's a little bit more complicated, but then, you know, we also take away this, and it is a flawed assumption that interest rates remain constant over time. Um, but, you know, everything in principles of finance is going to be constant interest rate through time, so it's much easier that way. But let's just <coughs> let's just leave our interest rate as constant for now, and we'll just, you know, we'll just leave it as a, as a, as a variable. So just, you know, 1 plus i, um, and that's obviously as a percentage here. <coughs> and how far are we pulling back that future value? Well, it's happening after one year. We're only pulling it back here. We're only pulling it back one year, so it's going to be to the power of 1. Now, is that the present value of the whole cash flow? Well, no, it's not, because, I mean, there's loads of this good stuff happening on and on and on. Um, so, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to add y over 1 plus, well, i is constant, so we're discounting by the same interest rate, to the power of n. Well, how many years do we need to pull y back? It looks like we have to pull it back for not just one year, but two years all the way back to get to the present, that's going to be two. So we have to do it to the power of two. I hope this is making sense. And you're probably predicting that the next part is going to be discounting z, because what we need to do is we need to get x, y, and z all the way back to the present so we can calculate the present value of the whole cash flow. So this one is going to be z divided by 1 plus i to the power of, well, you guessed it, if it's happening after three years, we have to pull it back three years, because we're standing here looking out. We're saying, whoa, z is happening three years out, but I want to know how much it's worth today. So what do I need to do? I need to reach out and grab z and pull it back, not just one year, not two years, but three years, so we get it back to the present. So that's three. <clears throat> and there we have the basics and the fundamentals of what it means to have the present value of an uneven cash flow, or CF, which is the abbreviation for cash flow, and you'll see that a lot. <coughs> um, so.